My name is um, Lynn Root. Um, I am from Spotify. Um, I am a back-end engineer. Um, I'm based in San Francisco, and I've been there for about two years. Um, I'm also the uh, vice chair of um, the Python Software Foundation, the, the board of directors. Um, the PSF, it's a nonprofit organization behind the Python programming language. Um, it holds like the intellectual property rights. Um, it also like promotes like the gospel of Python and, and helps foster like the, um, the well-known community that's behind Python. Um, I also uh, founded the San Francisco uh, location of Pi Ladies, as well as do a lot of global uh, work for Pi Ladies. Um, and Pi Ladies is um, a mentorship group for women and friends, so for everyone in the, in the Python community. Um, all right, so this talk. Um, I will first give um, a quick intro to what Spotify is. I'm sure a lot of people know about Spotify already. Um, but also how we use um, data. And then I'll go into how we use metrics and how my team and I came about implementing metrics. And then essentially what we learned uh, along the way to, to sort of appreciate the bigger picture. Um, so, so you can sit back a little bit. You don't have to take notes. I have everything like posted online. I have a little write-up as well. So, so yeah, you can sit back. <laughs> um, so, so what I basically want you to take away is, uh, is this. Um, metrics and tracking, it's, it's super fun, but, but should you track everything? And so we as developers, um, we have a uh, tendency to like to, to know everything, like how many uh, visitors are on our website, uh, how many referrals came in, uh, how folks use our services, if our servers are even up and functional. Um, we have a lot of tools at our disposal, like uh, New Relic, Graphite, Google Analytics, uh, Sentry, PagerDuty, whatever. Um, we even track ourselves, like all the steps and exercise and what breathing, how fast our hair grows, I don't know, whatever we can track. We track it, right? Um, maybe just to feel better about ourselves. I don't know if we do anything about it. Um, but if you measure everything, um, it's easy to get lost in the why you're measuring it. It's easy, it's easy to lose the meaning of all that data. So, um, so to start, uh, some background information so we're all on the same page of, about Spotify and um, how we use data. Um, so Spotify streaming music service, uh, it's available in uh, nearly 60 countries. Um, it, we beta launched in 2007 and uh, spread across larger European countries in 2008 and finally came to the US in 2011. We have um, over 20 million paid subscribers um, with 75 million monthly active users. Uh, we have over 30 million unique songs, not including compilation albums and such. And we add about uh, 20,000 each day. Uh, we also pay about 70 to 80 percent of our income to rights holders, totaling about three billion dollars so far. Um, so I work in a very small office in San Francisco with about five other developers. And I have to say, I feel obliged to say we are hiring for two mobile devs. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, but our main engineering office is um, in Stockholm and in New York with some data and machine learning in Boston. Um, so as you can imagine, that Spotify data is quite important. Um, these numbers that you see here, um, they're about a month old and they quickly grow. Um, we track uh, user-generated data like signups, logins, activity within um, the application itself, even, even tweets like the good, the bad, and the, and the embarrassing tweets. <laughs> um, we also track uh, server-generated data, um, including requests to various services, response times, response status codes, among a million other things. Um, and each squad within Spotify, um, we, we basically own what we collect. Um, uh, we, we collect with the, oops, sorry. Um, we own what we collect with the what, the how, when, uh, and how we will consume such data. We have um, analysts running thousands of Hadoop jobs um, a day trying to glean insights about user activity, trying to answer questions like how many paying subscribers there, there are right at this moment, um, or, or if this partnership was uh, financially beneficial for us. Um, behind the, the platform itself, we, we pay attention to like, API usage rates, um, login failure rates, feature usage, et cetera. We also have uh, data scientists, um, machine learning engineers analyzing uh, listening behavior, um, music uh, metadata, and the trends that actually power that recommendation behind the app itself. 
Um, teams have actually started to analyze um, actual like audio signals um, and the sounds of songs to, to actually pick up um, genres and instruments played. And so this only scratches the surface of, of the data that we collect and that we pay attention to. So we, we use various technologies related to data, including um, we, as well as Cassandra, uh, Postgres, and Elasticsearch. All of the uh, user-generated data sits in Hadoop, where uh, we run jobs against um, using our own Python library, as well as Crunch, Scalding, Spark, uh, or Hive. Um, we, uh, I actually heard a lot of people within data and machine learning like to use IPython with uh, scikit-learn and pandas, uh, which is nice from a Python world. Um, I even discovered um, we have our own IPython notebook server, which is pretty cool. Um, for DevOps-related activity, like uh, puppet changes and DNS updates, um, that gets search, Elasticsearch, um, where we have like our own uh, Kibana setup. Um, however, Spotify is uh, really plagued with a, a not invented here syndrome, so we, so we grow a lot of our own stuff. Um, so a lot of our back-end services is handled by a few homegrown systems, um, some of which have been open sourced. Uh, yet with all this setup, with all this technology, um, I'm very embarrassed to say that my team, my squad in San Francisco, did a lot of development in the dark. Um, we, had, uh, we were not tracking anything, and we, we didn't know what was successful when we did feature integrations. Um, we had no clue if our backend services were actually up and running that we were supposedly maintaining. Um, do take note, though, that we are the black sheep within Spotify, that not every squad is as bad as us. Um, and I think it's largely due to the fact that we are such a small team in San Francisco, very siloed from uh, New York and uh, Stockholm. Um, so this, this is a story of uh, self-discovery, uh, how to become a better, more effective team. And we did this by capitalizing on understanding our own data. Not everyone is a, are data scientists or statisticians or whatever, but everyone can grasp why it's important when the majority of our users can't log in. So um, Spotify, we've been very public um, about how we use Agile and its, and its software development process. Um, if you actually search for Spotify and Agile in YouTube, you, you get a couple of really good uh, videos describing our process, and I highly recommend you checking them out. Um, but one key aspect of agile development is to iterate over, um, iterate over our product, iterate over ourselves. Um, and we're trying to find what's best for works for us, works for the company, the squad, and everything in between. And so uh, late last year, uh, my squad, uh, we participated in this like, internal program called the Effective Squad Circle. And it's very corporate speak, I know, but I, I found it uh, very useful, um, especially when trying to sort of find ourselves. Um, so what it was, was um, monthly uh, challenges, um, kind of set up to figure out the team's current condition, um, comparing it to the desired condition of, of where we wanted to be and, and how we wanted to deliver our product, feature, service, whatever. And so the, like the following explanation um, might sound a little bit pro project manager-ish, um, but I found it very useful when um, thinking about implementing metrics um, for our team's back-end services. So um, the main goal was to find um, our target condition as a squad. Uh, where do you want to be? Um, it's certainly difficult uh, to establish a goal without context, without understanding of where we are now. So, so to figure out our baseline, we, we all sat down to answer a few questions as a group. Um, so uh, break, just kind of breaking it down here, um, the first question was, what do we want to deliver? Or what do we deliver? And it's a seemingly easy question, right? Uh, myself and my squad kind of in, like initially uh, struggled to answer this right away, and it certainly didn't roll off our tongues. So, um, so we looked at our past. Um, we listed the integration projects that we've um, delivered and the services that we currently maintain. That includes the Uber and Spotify integration, Last FM, the SoundHound integration. But the um, the most critical one um, is certainly our Facebook integration. It's the reason why we're here in San Francisco. So the Facebook, we have a new login, new user registration, and publishing to Facebook um, with, um, with over half our user base connected to Facebook in that way. So the next question for us is, um, for whom do we produce said product or service, um, and who actually defines our, our work? 
Um, at Spotify, uh, we believe um, the leadership is meant to conv convey a vision and the squad is, is meant to implement that vision in however way they deem necessary. Um, there isn't really any micromanagement. Um, there's a lot of trust, actually. But our lead team um, defines the direction that the squad takes, and so they're certainly one of our customers. Um, with uh, many integrations that we've done, we do have a lot of external partners. Um, thankfully, the, the tech squad, we are a bit shielded from, from the partners and direct communications, but that makes our development, our business development team one of our um, partners, our, our customers, and indirectly the partners themselves. But then, but then who depends on us? Who actually uses our work, our product, our service? Um, so yes, the majority of users um, do log in with Facebook, and it's safe to say it's a pretty integral um, system to the Spotify platform. Um, so we certainly can't fuck it up when uh, Facebook sort of makes breaking changes to their login profile, or pro login protocol, um, or their APIs, which uh, they have been known to do unannounced in the past. Um, but there are also other teams within the company that, um, that plug into systems that we run um, for social aspects, like sharing to Facebook from within the client itself. So moving on, the next question is about expectations. Um, what do our customers actually expect from us? Um, when trying to answer this question, it occurred to us that we never really asked our customers uh, what their expectations are, and so we did. Um, we wanted to know what was important to them with what we deliver. Uh, what Was it on-time delivery? Uh, predictable versus being productive? Um, do they expect solutions to problems that um, didn't exist or didn't know existed? Um, what were their expectations on uh, quality, usability, or other measurables? What were their expectations with how like the squad worked? Did they want weekly updates for progress or, or problems, et cetera? And so we couldn't ask all of our customers, right? 70, 75 million users would be a bit much. Um, and expectations could be different for different customers. So um, internal teams expected the Facebook service to just be reliable and scalable. Uh, business development wanted us to be very clear in um, what we could fe feasibly implement. And it's safe to assume that our users uh, will want to log in um, or sign up via Facebook um, if they choose to and, and for it to just work. Um, so the last question was, um, did we meet those expectations? Um, how did we know we've met those expectations? And this sort of stopped us dead in our tracks. No, we, we didn't know if our systems were up uh, or if it could handle um, extra internal load uh, or if, if or when um, users couldn't really log in or how many users were, have activated the, the Facebook or the uh, Spotify and Uber kind of partnership and, and of those, did that experience actually work for them? And um, so being people with an affinity for a tech and automation, uh, we naturally um, wanted to implement a technical solution. And so, um, so we implemented what's called like feedback loops. And it's a very generic term, um, not just to tech, right, that um, we can use to understand how feedback and what feedback is given. And for our squad, the, the main feedback loop we wanted was metrics. Um, we wanted all those snazzy looking like dashboards with eye candy graphs, like visuals with the latest technologies that I'm sure will be like obsolete tomorrow or whatever. Um, but, but in all seriousness, we wanted like immediate visual representation of what was going on. But what did we want to see and uh, what questions did we want to answer? So in line with the idiom, to throw spaghetti in the wall to see what sticks, uh, the, the, the squad brainstormed for a while, trying to come up with any question that we'd like to see an answer for. Um, so some of the ideas included a sign up and off flow abandonment, um, the Facebook connected users like a percentage over total users and that trend over time, uh, the percentage of users that signed up uh, through Facebook um, over like hour, day, week, whatever, and any like Facebook related errors. We were also interested in daily active users for uh, partners features, uh, registration, subscription rates by partner, um, web API uh, usage by partner, and then um, a squad focused Twitter feed like uh, uh, Uber and Spotify so we could see what's being complained about that we might not see in our logs. Um, we also kept track or keep track of our um, outstanding JIRA issues um, and requests count by internal requesting service or team. So um, we grouped these similar metri metrics together into, into buckets. We had usage, we had system health, we had business performance, and these, these buckets 
came in, in, into a dashboard themselves. They had their own little dashboard. And so we also created a few processes um, on the questions and metrics um, that I said earlier. Um, one process reviews the progress as a squad. Um, so at every retrospective that we have, um, we took a look at a couple of metrics that deals with the squad performance, like how many bugs were closed in the past period. Um, and so we use this to judge if the metric is something we'd like to continue seeing, um, if we can actively improve upon it. Like um, perhaps we only closed two bugs last week, but it was because we took two full days to acknowledge a bug. And, um, and what, if any, new measurable items we'd like to see in our next retrospective. Um, another is to have gold targets um, at the start of every integration process. Um, so for example, um, we wanted to know um, if we were successful on this integration, um, if it was successful. Like we wanted to know if um, we had X amount of users um, within the first two weeks. Um, and this is true, this sort of goal can only be judged um, based on historical user acquisition numbers. Um, so we definitely have some, some work to do beforehand. But this will also feed in our uh, retrospectives, and especially um, once the project is complete. Oh, we're going to change mics. OK. All right, hopefully this works. Thank you. All right, so moving on. Um, we also had um, a, a few uh, post-integration um, questions for uh, business development folks to like ask our like external partners um, on behalf of on the squad itself. So these questions um, include understanding our responsiveness, how our developer tools are, um, and if their company goals were met. So we may think that an, an integration was super successful, um, but they might have some insight that we do not. Um, so we've only been caring about metrics for um, since the beginning of the year, embarrassingly so. Um, but this is certainly the beginning for us, and it's allowed us some time to iterate um, and give a hard look of what we track and why. So you can track everything that moves, um, but will you get inundated? Um, certainly you can count every leaf of every tree in the forest itself, but that gets kind of, um, there, there's a lot of noise, right? So it goes back to the understanding your customer's expectation um, and essentially boils down to business value. You can, how can you maintain and improve upon um, the business value of your service and product? How does counting every single Facebook connected user actually help better ourselves? So when implementing these various metrics, um, I came across um, some, some questions that I, that I found um, really helped seeing the forest for the trees. So um, when creating a new metric, um, how do metrics actually map to um, business goals? For instance, will we, will we lose so much money, or, or how much money will we lose if um, the Facebook sign-up service isn't up? Um, how, how would you prioritize different goals? Uh, which, what is more important? Does it mean that you're going to neglect others or a lot time by priority? Is this uh, brand new shiny integration project uh, more important to pay attention to than, than other ones that we have going on? And that's fine that if it is, but how are we going to prioritize our time? And then um, how can we create dashboards that are actually actionable? Um, what is the goal? And more importantly, how can we drive towards that goal? Um, are we just going to say, oh, look, our uh, Facebook sign-up service is down, and then go to lunch? We actually have to do something, right? Um, so when representing metrics, um, how, um, how do we correctly measure uh, what we care about? We have all these tools to set up um, to help us create like uh, gauges, meters, histograms, timers, whatever. But what, what's the best uh, representation for this question or metric? And we might actually have to break out our um, college uh, stats book for this kind of thing. Um, but when actually consuming them, how, how often do you check in on your metrics? Uh, oops. Um, dashboards, um, they're never looked at, right? Um, they, it's a common problem that they become sort of background noise. How do you make dashboards more visible, more in your face? Um, should someone be responsible um, every week to check in on them? Um, what I found, honestly, is um, having a live stream of kittens on, on there rotated throughout the dashboard. Um, and do you, do you make them more visible by slapping it up on the TV or monitor? Or are the metrics too sensitive to broadcast throughout the, the office with, with visitors coming in? 
Um, perhaps you email snapshots, um, but will they be filtered away and not noticed? Or like me, all auto-archived for any unread messages. Um, being a bit introspective, um, for the things that we don't reach 100% of our goals, that gap between the baseline and, and the goal line, we need to assess the difference. Why does it exist? Is, is that even solvable? If you look at the dashboard, um, what actions are you actually going to take? Should you even create um, a dashboard if, uh, if a goal or an alert is not set up, and if no action will be taken? And the answer is probably not. Um, what about the unknowns? What is unknown? Um, we know like X amount of iOS users have connected their accounts to Uber, but we don't know um, how many don't use it because the uh, driver has an Android phone or they're not aware of the service. How do we approach these known unknowns? Um, and is it even worth it to, to approach them? So my team, um, we're still gathering um, insights, um, gathering the insights. Um, trying to understand what makes sense for us. And we've certainly added more metrics over time, and we found ourselves more focused, at least for right now, um, on service reliability rather than business value or um, squad performance type metrics. But that, those will come with time. As well, um, our monitoring folks, um, the, the team that helps squads monitor their, their services, they have been playing around with the idea of monitoring levels. Um, the thought is to have certain policies and levels around types of metrics, much like uh, logging levels. Um, so for instance, how long should you retain data that's critical versus just like debugging metrics? Um, should debugging metrics stay locally on the machine um, and all non-debug level metrics kind of sent away? Um, what levels of metrics should there be? Should there be like debug, info, critical error, whatever? Um, and then how do we educate um, all the developers to make sure that they don't abuse the uh, debug level kind of metrics? And so as this develops, as this idea develops and takes hold, um, it'll certainly come into play with what we think about our metrics, what we think is um, critical and important, and what we end up monitoring and storing. And so to bring back to this slide, the ultimate goal um, in us answering these questions is to give us um, both a shortened decision-making cycle um, as well as make more informed decisions about strategy and about partnerships. It's um, super easy to get lost in the forest, um, and it doesn't help that it's really fun to play with all those visualization software. Um, but in essence, we're placing current values um, in historical context in order to see patterns forming. How long, on average, does it take for the team to implement a new integration? Um, do our customers or ourselves um, expect a shorter turnaround time? Do we wish to just be able to appropriately estimate the time that it takes um, to do such a project? Or um, which internal team um, we should educate about rate limiting against their services? Um, and so the win here is these feedback loops, um, these thoughtfully implemented metrics. Um, we can use goal lines and alerts to create a, a more efficient team. Um, we, can, we will deliver higher quality software because of it, so we'll get the immediate feedback on any bugs that we may introduce, um, any system that fails and the like. And we'll opt for better integration projects based on historical business performance trends. All right, so the answer to this question, should we track um, everything that moves? And the very anticlimactic answer is probably, but only if you can define a goal, you can define an action if you haven't met the goal, and you can actually pay attention to it. All right, so um, all the, the slides and the write-up for this talk is, is up here in the, the image credits, as well as some further re reading about metrics, ideologies, and um, the a lot of technical stuff, too. So thank you very much. <laughs>